Why, hello everybody. It is Quentin. This is definitely not my house behind me, Phillips. Here to talk to you with a semi-afro today that's being contained by shampoo and conditioner about psychedelics from a Washington beach. So for today's video, what I'm pretty jazzed to talk about is the foundations of a good trip. What are the core elements or choices that we can make that ensure that we're not causing ourselves way too much unnecessary suffering on a psychedelic trip? I want to make clear that a bad trip is not something that can be controlled or avoided, but there are actions you can take regarding your set and setting that will vastly diminish the chance that you're going to spiral into a state of discomfort. So without further ado, how about we just get into that? The first element that I see as absolutely essential to minimizing the chance that I have a negative bad trip like experience is making sure that I have an area of retreat and an area of reassurance. An area of retreat is basically exactly what it sounds like. When you trip in any situation that is not your own home or your own comfortable environment, so in this example it could be with friends, at a concert, or just at an unfamiliar house that you're not necessarily used to being at, waves of a psychedelic experience can make you feel very uncomfortable, vulnerable, and honestly just anxiety ridden about the area that you're in. What are some of the advantages of having a predestined area that you can retreat to? Well, for one, it definitely allows the trip to proceed as naturally as possible. What I've noticed if I trip in a crowd or trip with other people, um, specifically on the overwhelming psychedelics like psilocybin and LSD, uh, often I am not quite acting exactly like I wish to. So I'm a really weird guy. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, sometimes you just want to do weird, weird things on psychedelics. And those weird things, while uh, deemed that by an observer like a friend or whoever is watching you, might be really meaningful to you in that moment. So a great example is many times when I'm on psilocybin uh, specifically, I'll feel this urge to do very strange body postures and I, I guess you would really just say yoga. And I think they might freak out people that I'm with. I think if I was with a group, they might wonder what exactly I was up to, you know, twisting my body like a, <laughs> like a contortionist. So having this area of retreat allows you to be yourself. It allows the trip to unwind in its most natural format. You could spend time with whoever you have decided to have this psychedelic experience with, but you have an area like a tent, a room, a bed, under a blanket, um, maybe your own couch, where you can kind of just go be weird for a bit without feeling any judgmental energy. The last thing that you want to feel on a psychedelic trip for too long is this weird judgmental energy. And what this isolation, this temporary isolation does is it alleviates the pressure of another conscious agent observing you. You of course could have a trip sitter or somebody watching you in that room, but the notion that you can just go be weird in a room is very, very appealing. And I know that at um, some concerts, or I, sh I should say festivals, there are these tents where individuals can go and sort of uh, press the escape button and maybe decompress from whatever pressure was building in their mind. An area of reassurance, as far as I'm concerned, is no different than a trip sitter. I call it an area of reassurance because in my own personal Discord server, we actually offer a trip sitting service where through a virtual medium, individuals can be trip set on a psychedelic substance. So for this reason, I don't merely call it a person that you can go to to seek reassurance, but an area of reassurance. So for you, if that's an online source or that is an actual trip sitter, it's not really that important. But what is important is when you decide to, you know, dive into this ocean of <laughs> this ocean, that you have somebody with a line attached to you ready to pull you out. The next foundational principle that I sort of try to adhere to on my psychedelic journeys is always allowing myself a change of pace. This can seem very, very trivial if you're just deciding to trip in your bedroom or your living room, anywhere, anywhere that you don't mind really tripping. But what happens to me a lot, maybe it's just my ADD tendencies, um, I need a change of pace. I need to dramatically contrast the area that I'm at with another area. And often for me, this has had marvelous effects. I have many memories of being in my room and having a trip that is pretty good. You know, I'm not really having any negative emotions. I'm sort of going through it, so to speak. And I decide to go into my backyard or I decide to go on a walk or I decide to actually go to a completely another area. Those contrasts can be 
powerful on psychedelics. They can bring you directly out of a negative mind state. So ask yourself, if you're stuck in this strange negative loop on psychedelics, have I contrasted this with maybe a more positive area? Like, have I left my bedroom and gone outside? Or if you're tripping uh, inside at night, have I even gone into the living room? <laughs> have I done anything to sort of bring a dynamic um, play into the environment that I'm in? Because stagnation can be very, very tense on psychedelics. You can really just sort of focus on your, this fact that you're not moving, the fact that you're kind of just in your, in your bedroom feeling tense. So to know that you can go take a walk or to uh, lighten the pressure a bit is, is really important, at least for me. So when in doubt, change up the scenery, you know, change up the pace. And in this aspect, I've really noticed that it's important to, I won't say it's important, you know, because you don't have to do it, but it's very valuable to be near some form of physical beauty on a psychedelic trip. So while we're talking about changing the immediate environment that you're in or moving to another location, it's really beneficial if those locations are beautiful in one way or another. If you're going outside to see a beautiful structure such as, you know, a waterfall or um, even just a creek bed or a river can be marvelous on a psychedelic trip. It can bring you right out of the depths of despair. In contrast to this, just having beautiful art or having beautiful music playing on a psychedelic trip can really uh, steer you more in the positive direction as well. This exposure to beauty and maybe even symmetry can bring a, it can invoke a feeling of magic. It can really, it can really just, you know, cast a beautiful light of uh, good vibes, I guess, to just be simple on your experience. So try to surround yourself to the best of your ability with something that's physically beautiful, whether that's a man-made object or <laughs> the glory of nature. Take your pick. Hey you, join my Discord. Link in the description below to a friendly community of over 10,000 psychonauts. We're going to use this platform to structure and organize the next psychedelic renaissance. Get ready. Another foundational rule that I follow to minimize these negative experiences is never, never try to fit a trip into your schedule. Never, never think that a trip is something that can be merely fit into a time slot between two things that you need to do. If you're in a situation where you don't have time on one side or another of the trip that you plan to do, don't do it. Going into a trip feeling rushed or forced is a nightmare decision. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a completely clear schedule. Psychedelics are not something that you do between two appointments. Psychedelics are the main appointment for the day that cancel all the other appointments. If you don't have time to fit in your psychedelic trip, if you're trying to fit it in between 12 and 6 p.m., don't bother because more than likely you're going to give yourself this tense feeling of anxiety that is directly connected to what other obligation or responsibility you're failing to fulfill because you're deciding to trip. Things don't just marvelously disappear on psychedelic experiences. While they might, you might get lucky and you might be able to sneak in a very fun mushroom trip right before um, whoever gets home or right before work or right after work. In the long run, if you continue to fill in these psychedelic trips in these time slot windows, you're pretty much setting yourself up to one day have a bad negative experience. The next sort of guiding principle you may say of steering away from a negative uh, trip experience is understanding and researching your dose. I become very frustrated by individuals who have a negative psychedelic experience and then upon me asking them tell me that they weren't really sure what the dose would do, they didn't weigh it out themselves, and they sort of just did a blind faith, you know, Hail Mary psychedelic experience. If you want to avoid these feelings of anxiety or even poisoning, know what you're taking. It's so important to Research yourself these trip reports of people who take five grams of psilocybin mushrooms. While they won't be identical to your experience and you shouldn't anticipate anything because of a trip report, you should never have any expectations going into a psychedelic trip, what they will do is give you a range of phenomena that you can expect to occur. I can imagine many people who really, really lose it on certain psychedelic experiences had no clue what they were getting into. So know what you're getting into, please people. Please know that 10 grams of psilocybin mushrooms is going to shoot you into another dimension. Don't take it for fun. Don't say, oh, we'll see what happens next, because that's what I did, and I ended up beating my chest on a beach and almost getting butt naked. 
So, <laughs> heed my words, people. You know, heed my words, please. Don't take something to get messed up. Don't take something to just trip. Look up what you're going to take, get a test kit, test the substance, and then take with confidence and a dose of that substance that you have personally researched. This is the surest way to eliminate any sense of anxiety around taking that substance. The last thing you want to be doing after you take a substance is second guessing the potency, the, um, the safety, or just the general character of the substance that you just took. So being informed is the first step to not being afraid and not having anxiety during these powerful experiences. When you know what you got yourself into, it's not going to ultimately save you from any experience that might be unpleasant but it will keep you from certain unpleasant paranoid experiences surrounding you know, taking a psychedelic for the first time or at a high dose for the first time. My fifth and final foundational principle of avoiding unnecessary bad trips is complete acceptance and radical surrender. Complete acceptance and radical surrender means after deciding that you are in the mind state to have a psychedelic trip, that you are emotionally healthy enough to trip, and that you have confirmed the identity and the potency of the substance that you've decided to take, now that you have consumed this substance, it's time to completely surrender. It is no longer the time to wish that you hadn't taken this, uh, such as I did on my first LSD experience, or um, try to, you know, vomit, something like that. Unless you have concerns about the safety of what you just ingested, now is the time to bow your head and relax. It is the time to become aware of the sensations in your field of experience because no matter what you're you've decided your fate you know <laughs> this is going to be uh, unfortunate for some people who just decided at this moment maybe they're watching this video that they went too deep such as i did after i took way too many mushrooms uh, on a few occasions but look your best bet at this point if you're watching this uh, about to undergo a very powerful experience is to just surrender because if you try to stand against this tide, it is going to crush you on its shores. It is going to absolutely demolish you. So your only hope of this being kind and accepting of you and offering you a possibly healing experience is to observe what it has to offer and present radical surrender. That's my philosophy anyway. These are all subjective beliefs that I carry that I find very, very useful on a psychedelic experience. I hope some of them have been helpful to some of you, and there definitely are more on this list. You know, this isn't the all-encompassing guide to minimize negative trip experiences, but I hope a few of these can be implemented in your own life, or maybe you can even give me some more tips to implement in mine. All right, I think that's going to bring an end to me talking about some of the core philosophies that I follow to try to avoid some of these negative states of mind on a psychedelic trip. Um, thank you all so much for watching this channel. I really cannot say that enough. The fact that it has grown at this rate is just, it's just phenomenal. I'm going to be eternally grateful to each and every single one of you. And I think with that, I'm just going to see you next time. all right i have teleported back home to do my favorite part of every single video and that is to thank each and every single one of my patreon supporters how about we just get right into it adam sornat alex miser alpha disconnect anti miko makinen ashcore draxon bailey ben caleb talaxon chicks chris Filion, connor nelson the happy hour show danny cameron david vincent Dendare Lotus, Devin Hall, Davilas, Dylan, Eric Sear, Fishy, Jadimanos, Helvetia, Irate Llama, Jack Donahue, Jake Hall, Jason Barnes, Josh Farrell, Justin Boudreau, Karenda, Kelvin, King Ragnar, Lassie, Leron, Lithium Blodwin, Louis Le Louis, Lucky, Lynn A. Norton, Mate Orr, Michael, Miguel Navarro, Mike King, Mike Wazowski, Mohia Den Shake, Morty, Nate, Nathan Martins, Night Slayer Bot, Ora McLeod, Oven Want Kenobi, Pit Coob, Professor, Rainbow, Rakaya, Robbie, Royon, Ryan Allen, Sarah Chapagain, Sebastian, Secular Shaman, Sierra Butler, Sir Pugsley, Serena, Stephen, Taplast, Tatum Scott, Three Pounder, Toxic Player, Trevor, Turtle Toast, Tyler, Voyager, Zachary David, Zebediah, and Zamir Burger. Thank you all so much. Your support is the core of this channel. Until next time.